There we go. Microphone helps, right? Microphone helps when you're trying to do a show. Um, yeah, Arcadies, I, thanks for reminding me. I wanted to show you the books. We were talking about this out in the uh, out in the garage there. So I got a couple of books to show you here. And, and I showed you the John Patrick book before. And by the way, good morning to the copy run here with John from Procraps on Casino Gaming TV. Little Monday morning action here. A couple of my favorite books are these. Um, one of the things my, I'm, I own that's my favorite is this Scarney on Dice book. This thing is a hardback. I don't know if you can see the color of those pages and how just gross and dog eared this, this book smells like ass. And if I actually open the, the book too much, the pages will start falling out. It's so, this thing is so old, but it's got these great pictures of these guys, You're right? This is like awesome. This book is one of my prized possessions, but yeah, I can't really read it. So I've got another copy of it that I actually read. This one here, I won't even open up, but it's, it's loaded with, like in the pages, there's all sorts of notes and things that people have circled in this book. It's fantastic. That's a good one. Another one, and this is the one that we're always talking about, is The Craps um, from Gra Sam, Sam Grafstein. It's a great book. Um, this one here also um, was used. Um, it's a used paperback. It's not the original. I'm going to go back and try and find me an original version of this one here. But this one here was also used. It's dog-eared. It's got highlights in it and stuff like that from the previous owner. And then, of course, one of my favorites is, now again, I'm not a math guy, right? I'm not a math player with, with Craps especially. But I respect it. So I love this book. Um, actually, he's got Gambling 103 out. This is um, Michael Shackelford, Shackelford's book. This one here has basically one chapter for every game in the casino. It's one chapter for Texas Hold'em, for craps, for roulette, for all the different games. And it's like, here's the only way you should ever play craps. He, of course, with Michael, it's past line max odds, right? Here's the only way to play roulette. Here's the only way to play whatever. Like the math, the math low house edge way to play all the games. It's all in here. It's a short book because there's not a lot to it, right? He's like, hey, here's the only way you should ever play Mississippi Stud or whatever the game is. So it's, it's actually really, a, they're all good reads for different reasons. I love the Scarney. I love the Graf sign. I love the Patrick stuff because not only is the teaching good, and I think some people will, will be like, you know, maybe not the teaching is the greatest thing, but some of these old guys, right? I don't really care if the math guys don't like how these guys taught. I love how they teach. I love the way those books, I've said it before, the way those books are written is awesome. I mean, like the voice that they write the book in, it's like there's things misspelled. It's like the sentence structure is terrible. It's like they were talking and somebody was typing and that's what the book became. Like it literally, it's like they're speaking to you in a conversation. So to read those books, to me, it's, it's, it's sure that you get good information about it, but it's just, it's the... I don't know, man. I read those books and I hear their voice in my head. And I just, I love that style. So um, I'm going to start working towards this. I'm going to start working towards all the old books and building my library uh, for sure, right? That's a thing. Um, but you, when you go to Amazon, you can find used ones. When you, when you go there and you look up books, um, you can buy the Kindle, you can buy a new hardcover, new paperback, the latest edition. Try and find you a used one if you can do it. And, and owning these used old things it's just super cool. I mean, to me, just having it is one of those things that I really, just, I, I just enjoy having it. Um, it's way cool. So, um, all right, let's jump into the show today. A couple of things I want to, I want to get to. Um, yeah, let's just, let's just do it. Let's just jump on in to our next screen here. And, and we'll talk about like the Super Bowl. Oh my God, what a game. Now, admittedly, I did not pay close attention to the game. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Um, we're at a friend's house. We were eating a bunch of crap. We had four dogs in the house and a couple of kids running around. So it was a little bit chaotic. So I didn't pay close attention, but what a freaking game. And I, I just got to, I mean, I know the Niners have been there before, but I got to welcome you into the family, right? Um, I was talking to my friend Ken from Kendo's Gambling the other day and we're just talking sports a little bit. And he's like, never bet against Mahomes. Like, who you got? He's like, never bet against Mahomes. I, mean, I don't care how good that Tampa and defense is. Never bet against Mahomes. So I'm like, all right, you know. So I, I went and put money up on the Chiefs. I was probably going to anyway because I, in good conscience, can't root for the Niners, even though that was probably the better bet to make. Um, I just couldn't. <laughs> yeah, Seahawks fan. I can't root for the Niners, right? Um, but I, I was hoping for a great game. And God, I mean, Mahomes dusted the Niners a few years ago in the Super Bowl. You had that game with Buffalo with the 13 second drive to force overtime. Right, last year he's down again, and again Philly had the high octane offense last year. No way Philly loses that game, except to Patrick Mahomes. 
comes back and, and pulls it off in the end. And yesterday I was talking in, in chats with my friends and family. I'm like, you know, if the if the Niners don't come out of this thing in the first quarter hot, they better come out 10-0 in the first quarter, 17-0 at half or more. Because their defense is good enough to shut the Chiefs down for a while. If the Niners don't come out out, they're gonna lose the game. There's no there's no way Andy Reid doesn't adjust. No way Mahomes doesn't figure it out. If you're if they're within 10 points, that game's over. And I I, just, I had this feeling the whole time. I'm like, there's no way, there's no way San Fran can can play this good a defense the entire game, and Mahomes not find a way to get this shit done. And he did. And you got the the weird that weird freaking fumble on the punt. I mean, we need a fumble, right? And and you feel terrible because the guy's running, you know, hits him in the leg, whatever. It's a freak play. Boom, touchdown. That's all. That's all you need. You got you give these guys like a crack, just a crack in the armor, and bam, that one off that guy's foot, two plays later, whatever it was, touchdown. You know what I mean? They block a field goal, that's the difference in the game. Or they block the extra point, that's the difference in the game, right? Little, you give that guy and Andy Reid just a little sliver and it's over, you know? It just proves to you, I mean, how close all that stuff is, but really, that you gotta give everything to Reid. I mean, Reed and Mahomes, holy crap. I mean, what, what, what a duo. I'll never, ever, ever bet against him. I mean, until he's old, I guess. I don't know, but wow. Uh, DJ's in here. Um, you gave out all the locks. You did. You guys were, all, we were talking in, in text. You guys crushed, crushed the betting on that one, by the way. Um, I actually made money. Um, I did have one stupid bet that I made because I couldn't figure the DraftKings app out. So I made one dumb bet that cost me a bunch of profit because I was I was clicking stuff in the app, trying to like, check lines out, and as I was doing it, I was actually making bets. So I made like a 75 hour six leg parlay or some shit like that. Um, but other than that, you guys were awesome. And it was a, it was a great, it was a great game. It was a, it's a classic game, right? And I love defense, so to me it was like my kind of game to watch and just waiting like, and I kept saying in the house, I'm like, how are they gonna pull this out? Like what's gonna be the way that they pull this one out? Because you knew they were going to. It's a matter of like what story is going to get written, and man, that was a hell of a game. That was a really good game. So anyway, I know Chris and 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 um, and Ian will have plenty to say about it, but um, I wasn't surprised at all by how it by the result. I was surprised by how it, the, the 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 path it took to get in there. But man, like I said, you give this guys one little bit, just a, just a fingertip on a on a extra point, right? And a guy who's running gunning into the in, into block for a punt and it hits him in the freaking heel that's the game like literally that's the game it's amazing it's amazing to me how just how razor thin some of this shit is and you cannot give you cannot give you know goats any any space at all so there's that all right um reminder for a couple of things the trip around the table this week will feature i have talked to him i have confirmed it it's going to be ken from ken knows gambling is going to be with me a trip around the table now for some of you who are new and don't know Ken, go watch Ken at Ken Knows Gambling. Go watch about 10 videos this week and get to know get to know who he is. Um, Ken's one of my favorite people. He he's uh he's 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 a he's a dude, man. Ken Ken will just tell you what he feels, and there's no filter, right? You're gonna get Ken unfiltered for an hour and a half. And the good thing is it won't be about craps, right? You know that we talk on the trip around the table, I play craps, but um, we don't talk about gambling. It's gonna be your questions, so random questions about life. Um, and I can tell you there's gonna be some interesting things um, that'll come out, because there's things about Ken that I don't think you know that I do. And I'm gonna force a couple of questions to get him into some into some areas that I wanna dig into with him, because the guy's got some interesting history, and he's he's got some good information for us. So we're gonna to talk to him about some cool stuff. So get your questions for Ken ready, and again, use Discord. Drop him in Discord, let me know what you want me to ask him. And or what you want us to talk about, I guess, during that show. I, I'm, I'm starting to really look forward to that show. Just want to get make sure I'm, I'm better on the schedule with it. Um, also, two other announcements to make. One is going to be a shooters tournament that George from CY has announced. Um, I think the announcement came out yesterday, maybe yesterday. Um, so just like last year, all the Craps Nation guys, all the, 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 the you know, with, some of them are DIs, some of them aren't. Some guys are just throwers, right? They just like to random throw. Um, they're doing a tournament, so it's going to be this really strict rule thing. So you've got like, I think it's three shooters, and the camera's got to be in certain spots. I'm going to be one of the hosts for it again, so I will be hosting shooters 
as they go through this thing. It'll be a qualifier round, then a 32 round, then a 16, then an eight. It's like the, the NCAAs. Um, it takes a long time to get through it. It's really fun. Um, whether you believe in DI or not does not matter. Enjoy the tournament because you're going to get to hear and see people from the chat that you probably never got a chance to talk to before. Not talk to, but you'll see them at least, right? Guys from Craps Nation, guys from around that you probably know their icons and their little, um, their, their chat like kind of names, but you'll get to see them shoot. And, and you'll get to hear the interviewers um, talk to them a little bit during their role and get to know them a little bit. So it's just another way to expand the group. I think it's pretty cool. So um, like I said, there will be some of the, the more well-known folks that throw, um, some lesser known folks that throw, um, some folks that are gonna literally just, I think, throw in this thing. And it should be a lot of fun. I, I, I really enjoyed it last year, uh, it's super cool. Um, also, to be announced, a forthcoming players tournament. Just kind of put a pin in that. We'll have an announcement on that at some point here soon um, about a way to do a players tournament, like a longer running players tournament, um, a crapsy kind of thing. So that's in the works, just so you know, there's, there's scuttlebutt around that. Also, I'm shopping right now um, for uh, a way to do the Yoathon. And if you don't know what I'm talking about here, some of you again are new. Um, so if you're new, I'm gonna tell you the story. We had a really good friend of, of this channel and a big player in our community, Chiro Muchi from, he had a channel called Midmo Yo, um, the Yo, and, and, and he called his channel that because he, he's, he's from Middle Missouri. So Midmo was Middle Missouri and the Yo, of course, the 11. Um, well, he passed, he passed over the summer, which was unfortunate. He was a good, a really, like I said, a really good friend of mine, a lot of us. And we started a scholarship fund for his daughter. He left behind a very young daughter. Um, so we started a scholarship fund last year for Layla. And just been thinking about how we how we're gonna keep his memory alive, all that. So what we're gonna do is do what's called a Yoathon. And I think I've talked to Jeff, I've talked to myself, obviously. I'm gonna talk to Chris from Dice DJ, and I'm gonna talk to other people, maybe George, maybe Alfredo, and see if everybody's willing to on all their live shows, which we all do with a bunch of live crapsy, take all the 11s that we roll. Every 11, just we, we log them in crapsy anyway. And every day, just type in the number of 11s into an app. That app will track the number of 11s. And what I'm asking the audience to think about doing is pledging something like, if it's one cent, fine. Ideally, 11 cents. 11 cents per 11. You do like, 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 a, like a, a yo a thon Every yo thrown from now until September, let's say, um, every yo thrown on all of our live shows, if you would all think about pledging a penny is fine or 11 cents is better for all the yos. And maybe between the, the, the eight or nine of us that are gonna do this live, I'll, I'll try and get Gargoyle and Jeff in it too. Uh, maybe with all of us going live, we might get a few hundred yos. You know what I mean? And you know, you get 100, 100 yos and it's a hundred dollars donation from y'all whatever that's gonna be, that'd be fantastic. Um, I, I think it'd be, actually 100, 100 yos would be 10 bucks, right? Or 11 bucks. Um, let's do it. If you're into that idea, just give me a thumbs up in chat. Just, just say yes, I'm in, I'm in for the yo fest or the yo-a-thon. And I'll, I'm gonna start working on finding a, 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 a website that'll set it up for us. There's, you, you gotta go through a charity to do this or a charity website to do it. So I'm shopping right now to, to find out how to get it done. But I think it's a good idea. And I think between that, um, the players tournament raising some money. I think we'll have some uh, two kind of pathways through to raise some money between now and October. And in the meantime, I'm working really hard at getting this stuff put together for the October Craps for the Cure. You'll start seeing updates here on the show about Craps for the Cure pretty soon. Once I've got things locked in, venue-wise and time-wise and all that kind of stuff, I'll have good announcements on that and we'll get y'all figured out what it's gonna look like, all right? We're gonna talk here in a minute about the the, uh, the daily paycheck, the drawdown, and then I'm gonna do my, uh, uh, we're gonna jump into Gambling 201. We did a 101 series, 20 shows, um, basics of gambling, not even about gambling, it's more about psychology, right? Now we're gonna do money, 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 money. We're gonna talk about managing your money as a gambler, which I think is gonna be, again, knowing who you are um, mentally, being mentally ready to gamble, now being financially ready to gamble is gonna set the stage for gambling 301 later on, which is how does gambling work? How do the casinos make money? Where's the math in that? And then we'll get into actually getting it done. It's gonna take me a while to get to the 401 series, which is where it's gonna be fun, but I feel like we gotta set all this groundwork. So, um, all right, let's do it. Let's head over to um, to the drawdown and talk about the drawdown. And I, and I think 
um, I switched out of the mob because I've got this, um, it, it's funny to hear me say this because I've got my, my two favorite ways to play, right? The Headless Horseman, and as you saw a few weeks ago, we did the, uh, uh, the Odds Maker strategy. They're both kind of hybrids, okay? The Horseman is a hybrid. It's a don't pass and it's three combats. Um, it's designed to profit on a short roll. It's designed to then switch sides on a good roll. It doesn't repeat forever the, the, the DPs. It, just, it has a limit to it. There's a way you play that thing that makes it not quite as hybrid-y as a normal hybrid is. But what I found is the more hybrids I play, the more six, seven, eights I play, the storm was a good example. The six, seven, eight, we struggled with it, especially early. The mob, we struggled with it early. Whenever you are splitting sides like that, you end up just bleeding. The whole, you bleed, you bleed, you bleed until the good thing happens. Sometimes though the bad thing happens as often as the good thing does and that bleed is where your losses are. That's how the mob felt. The mob felt like we'd lose, we'd win, and then we'd bleed. And we never really had a consistent on it. And that's why I got rid of it. Um, I, I, I'm just gonna go as much as I can picking a side or playing something low volatility for the paycheck. The paycheck has got to be reliable. It's got to be somewhat safe. You don't want to go out there and, and burn 5K every day on a paycheck, right? And I think sometimes the laddering systems, that can happen to you. You can get ripped on that thing. I'm trying to keep it as low vol as I can, which is why I'm avoiding things like Anthony wants me to do the, the power of the seven. I'm not going to do a big ladder system. A, the bankroll right now isn't there for it. But B, I don't want to run the risk of torching the whole thing and the, and the wind goal being too small. The drawdown here is, is a thing that might go, it's, it's kind of orthogonal to that, right? It's a little bit on the opposite side of that. So I don't, I don't know if this is gonna work or not. I'm gonna give it a week and we'll see how it feels. Um, it's a pure right side play. If you watch the show this morning, you know what I'm talking about. It's a, four, it's a four unit to two units to one unit and then you're out. The question I've got with it is gonna be this and what is our win goal? What we know is that if I start with 1080 across, right? I know that if I get three hits, right? One, two, three hits, it's 500 bucks, roughly 500 bucks in profit. So 1080 wins you 500. So if we say that's enough, right? I'm gonna buy in for three grand, I'm gonna burn a grand to win 500. If it works, and again, the three grand's there in case we fail and we try it again, we try it again, we, we get three, three tries at it. If, if what happens is this, if we get, Three and two as our record, 66%, right? If we, if we win three times, right, we're going to win 1500 bucks. The two times we lose are going to cost us two grand. So you'll be down about 500 bucks if you go three and two at a $500 win goal. If you go four and one, 75%, right, now we're going to be, or 80% rather, now we're going to be up at, at $1,000 in profit. You're going to win 500 bucks four times, two grand. You're going to lose $1,000 once, you're up 1000 However, if you do the drawdown twice, go 1080 to win 500 and then do 1080 again to win 500, now you're winning $1,000, okay? Here, if you go three and two, you're gonna win $1,000 because three times 1,000 is 3,000. The two losses of 2,000, you're up a grand. If you go four and one, you're gonna win four grand and lose one, you're net up three. So I'm wondering if, Raising the raising the uh, the the win goal from five hundred to a thousand. Even if we still are at three and two, it's easier to go three and two than it is to go four and one. But it's easier to win five hundred bucks versus a thousand. So I'm, I'm I'm torn with with leveling here. So we're going to spend this week doing it this way. We're going to try it once and leave and count our wins. We're going to try it twice and leave and count our wins and see how this week feels. Today we did it twice. We did the, the $1,000 profit today. We did that just fine. So you can bet that every time you do a $1,000 profit, you're going to get the $500 profit, right? So it's, it, that's a given. It's a matter of how many times we don't get the second thousand is really going to be the, the test. So I'm going to run this thing this week in a trial run again, just bet leveling side uh, from the side of bet leveling and this, this notion of how reliably can we get three wins or four based on lower or higher win goals. So we're gonna play with it that, week, that way this week and just do our, our, our analysis that way. Um, okay, uh, you're saying, what is, this, what is going on with pizza? Um, 
Let's see. Uh, I don't have no idea what's going on with the pizza. <laughs> um, there's some whole thing going on in there about that. Anyway, I'll, I'll <laughs> maybe I'll cover it later. Um, all right. There is reasonable biases in pizza. First of all, um, that Chicago bullshit ain't pizza. There's no bias at all. That ain't pizza. That's cheese pie. Let's just get one. Let's just call a spade a spade. That Chicago deep dish crap, it's not pizza. And I had the microphone and I'm right about that. That's not pizza. Other styles of it, I can get it behind. Pan pizza, Detroit style pizza, the New York style. We can have arguments about what's better. That Chicago crap, that ain't pizza. That ain't pizza. I love you all from Chicago, but sorry, that's not pizza. Cheese pie. It's too much cheese. Anyway, there's <laughs> why we got on that subject. Let's, uh, oh, wow, we're on the wrong thing. Let's, let's, oh, you know, I didn't pull the, the screens up. Let me, um, wow, hold on, give me a sec. I got to get down here and, and, and talk about, where's my, uh, where's my stuff? I lost my place. Give me a second here, guys. I lost my place. Um, where is it? Here it is. Okay. Oh, wow. Um, whew, that was a, not a good transition. Sorry about that. Um, I do want to start this session, um, the Gambling 101. And before, and just, you know, when I get done with this, I want to go to my table. I've got something. I've got something to show you today, and I want to get your opinion on it um, after we go. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. So money management. Um, I, I, I say this a lot, and I don't, mean, I, don't, I don't mean to be pedantic about things, but I say all the time, this is the secret to gambling, right? And I've said that about understanding how to bet a variance. I've said that before about knowing your personality. I've said that before about a lot of things. I think bankroll is another one of those core features, one of the core tenets of really being solid as a gambler. And so this series that we're gonna start here, it's the first part of Gambling 201 is gonna be all about money management. And I mean all about money management. We're gonna get into all these topics. I just wanna give you kind of a, a top-down look at what I plan to talk with you about over the next couple of months. Nah, maybe, maybe two weeks, three weeks, whatever. Here's the things I wanna get into. I wanna talk about financial planning in general and specifically with, with how it relates to gambling. Now, I know we've got a couple of people in our, in our live chats here that do financial planning as, a, as their job. I know Ed Robinson does that. I know, I think it's Anthony is into, is into um, uh, playing the markets. I know El Toro plays the markets. Um, I've got really good friends that, that are investment and wealth managers. That's a part of it, right? I'd like you to take some of the the cornerstones of those things, and we're going to apply those to our gambling budgets. And I say this a lot, right? We all say, oh, 10% is not enough. 20% is not enough. Well, guess what? 10% return in the real world is a great return. For some reason, we're never satisfied with that at a craps table or at a roulette table. But I think having this this, this disciplined financial approach that, that a lot of financial planners bring along with just a little bit of degeneracy to kind of push the needle a little bit is where it's at for us, right? And I know when I, when I you know, invest with my, with, with my investment person, we always may have the discussion, you probably do too, with your 401k. Do you want to go conservative, medium, aggressive? All those ways to invest your money and you kind of split like 25% goes aggressive, 10% goes whatever, right? Same thing at the table. It's what we talked about in Gambling 101, right? Splitting your time and your money between conservative and aggressive plays is exactly how you play the financial markets. And we're applying that logic to the, to the casinos too, okay? Um, how you plan your sessions and your trip from a budgetary standpoint. We're gonna look at multiple bank accounts. I've talked to you before about having what's called a 401G account or an account you set up just for gambling. I'm gonna show you the way that I set up my accounts. I'm gonna show you my, not my actual bank, but my, my personal bank, bank account system as well as my gambling bank account system and show you how, how splitting your money around different, different places helps keep you organized and it helps keep you disciplined. It accounts for how we handle our expenses, our profits, and our losses. It actually puts money into differing funding sources. And when, when funding sources, I look at our bank accounts, I also look at ways to fill our, our bank accounts. And for example, when you're starting a, a trajectory in gambling, um, your 401g account will have zero dollars in it. There, you can't, right? You gotta, it's gotta come from somewhere. What's your side hustle that's putting money into your 401g account so that you can go out and gamble and grow the account? 
So we're gonna talk about funding sources as well, ways to kind of build your, your bankroll so that you can go out there and get and have some fun at the casinos and maybe win some, okay? We'll talk about managing money at the tables during sessions and during series of play at the table. We're gonna look at my craps rack management strategy again. I know that other people have their own rack management strategies. Joe does for sure, I know Victor does. We'll look at the way that other folks manage their racks. I think it's an important thing to look at that. We'll look at how I manage my stacks at a blackjack or at a roulette table to know where, I'm, where I am because it's different without an actual rack like you have in, in craps. Um, we'll look at calculating proper win goals and loss limits. And again, today's a good example. I'm gonna talk about the drawdown. What's the right win goal loss limit for with the bankroll that you've got? How do you manage that in a rack? How do you plan for that going to a session? We're gonna bring in some, some experts to talk about how comps really work at a casino, how the bosses really rate you, and to the point where, what is the computer that they do? What are they typing in? Like what information do they give the computer to let them know what your rating is so your comps can be calculated? Some casinos calculate it all with computer. Some casinos have it with a person still, a boss deciding what that is, right? We'll talk about some of that. I wanna talk to you about um, taxes. It's been talked about here a lot. Um, what do you do with a big win? How do you handle a big win? Sometimes you can't avoid taxes. Hand pays on a slot machine, you can't avoid it. They're gonna give you a piece of paper. Um, you win the, um, the fire bet and paperwork comes out. You can't help that, right? You're gonna have to pay taxes on some of that stuff. But how do you handle bigger wins when it is just chips and cash? How do you do that, right? In fact, a big win to the table with all those chips, what do you do from a security standpoint, okay? And an option there might be looking at marker play. And I think there's a negative connotation to marker play. I think there's a positive way to look at marker play as well. So I'm gonna explore all these things with you over the next, whatever this is, 18 to 20 days. We're gonna spend about 20 minutes every day on one of these topics and kind of just break it down a little bit. And again, I'll share you with you what I've done that's worked for me, what I know to be quote unquote true, but I'm gonna bring in people who have done this for a living to talk to us about some of these things and really get some experts in here to kind of add some flavor to it. And again, I can't answer tax questions, but I know somebody who can. I can't answer ratings questions, but I know somebody who can. I'm gonna bring those folks in. And that's gonna be the Gambling 201 series. Again, it's gonna take us about a month to get through it, four or, or 20 or so shows here, um, and 20 or so breakdown videos when we're done to get through it all. And I'm excited about it. This is a good one. Um, again, it won't be doing anything at our table, doing a lot of spreadsheet work, but I think it's important. And I know that some of you are gonna say to me, ah, I already know all this stuff, John. Like I'm already, I've, I've been gambling for 30 years. I already, um, I already know it all. Why are you doing this? Well, here's the thing. Not everybody's been gambling for 30 years. There's people who are watching our show for the, that are brand new to this whole thing. And also you may have kids or grandkids that are getting into this world. Um, and as you know, if you have kids, they don't always listen to you, um, but they may listen to me. So these videos might be the kind of thing you wanna send off to the younger generation. Say, hey, watch this foundational stuff. This is where it's gonna be you know, important for you to start your, your career. I, I think, by the way, as, as a total aside here, um, what's very interesting is if you look at my, and I, I'll, I will share this one day, um, a total side note here. Look at my, my YouTube statistics. Um, the videos I put out, the Gambling 101 videos, are my worst videos. Like, they're good videos, I mean, quality-wise, quality but you look at, like, John's How to Play the Iron Cross video, it got 14,000 views last month. John's Are You a Conservative Gambler Psychology Series got 150 views. Like, nobody wants to watch this stuff, but trust me, it's important to have out there. I think these are the most important videos I'm ever gonna do, getting all this basics out there. So um, I would like to have it um, spread. So let let this be uh, the thing that you kind of push out, all right? Um, all right, let me jump in um, to a couple of questions and then, then I wanna go to my table with you and talk about a few things here um, that came to mind to me over the weekend. So let me just go ahead and check some PCs really quick and see if there's anything I need to talk to you about. Let's see, uh, don't forget, I showed you the book. Um, the Yellow Grafstein book, sorry, is um, it's called Craps, um, To Play Like a Pro, Learn from a Pro. There's, he has other books, but this is the one that I, that I ended up getting. This, is the guy, this has got everything kind of nicely summarized in it. He's got all these like great, you know, pass line, progression charts and stuff. It's a really, it's a, it's a great book. Um, so there you go. Um, let's see. 
Um, you have other additions. Yeah, for sure. Um, be, yeah, that's why I say like, if you can, and I think you're right, JR, if you can find an OG copy, get the OG copy. If you can find a used one, get a used one versus the downloadable ones for sure. Um, let's see. A lot of them are self-published. Yeah. Um, they have intrusive thoughts printed in them. They're great. Like I said, the wording is so great. You know, they're, they're just, they're fantastic. Um, I will ask Skill, um, I will ask what her fund amount is. I want to say there was a couple thousand bucks in it, maybe a little more than that when we left, um, when we got done with the memorial service. I don't know for sure, but I'll find out. I'll find out from, from Crystal. I haven't, I haven't talked to Crystal in a while, so I will find that out. Um, let's see. Um, <laughs> cheese is a food group in a sense. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, my favorite pizza is a New York style flat extra cheese, nothing else. Like literally cheese and bread or cheese and dough. Nothing else is all I do on pizza. I don't do anything anything fancy. I just don't like that deep dish. All that cheese is too much. Um, <clears throat> to me, like I have to have my pizza be <clears throat> wide and foldable and eat it like a like a folded over sandwich. <clears throat> With Chicago pizza, you can't do that. I just don't really enjoy it. I, I remember going to Chicago, honestly. Um, I did a, this is back when I had my software company. This is going back, God, 1997 or 98. I went to Chicago and I did a trade show for my company. And um, I was so excited to go to Chicago because I got I, I went to Wrigley and saw a game. It was in August, hotter than hell. Um, and I was so stoked to have Chicago deep dish pizza. And I went to like some famous place and I got it. And I came and I got back to the to the hotel and I was like so disappointed. I was so I, I never I was like I was like crushed because I'm such a pizza nerd. I love pizza. I was really crushed by it. I, I was like I was almost sad. Um, it just, it, it just, for whatever reason, it, it just is too much for me. I, I just didn't like that much. Anyway, I'm, I'm more, I'm more simplistic. Um, let's see, Arcades, uh, lemon juice. I've never tried that. That's interesting. A little spritz on cheese pizza. I'll give it a shot. What the hell? Um, Cajun craps. The reason I watch guys like John's because I have been gambling for 30 years and you're tired of losing. I'm tired of losing too. Um, I've actually been lucky my whole life. Um, I am a very unlucky gambler. Let's just say that. I'm a very unlucky gambler. My wife has the luck. That lady wins, like, it's, an, it's annoying how much she wins. I have to work. I have to work for my luck, right? I have to grind. I've learned how to grind over the years. So I have been lucky in terms of I'm, I'm more wins dollar-wise over my life than losses. I know this. Um, and it's because I grind. It's not because I'm super lucky. I've hit a couple of home runs, but I'm not lucky. I grind and I work. So everything I teach is about the grind and the work because that's, if you got luck along with that, you're gonna be better. But if you grind and work and you can kind of keep even or get a little bit like here, that's the what I'm looking for. You know what I mean? And I, it makes my trips to the casino way less stressful. I don't stress at all when I go to the casinos. I don't worry about it because I know, I know the ways that I play are pretty stable and I might lose 200 bucks here, I might win 500 bucks there and we're gonna be fine at the end of the weekend. You know, I went to, I told you this, so I went to Vegas last time I played probably 30 sessions over the course of five days. And I walked out of there up $9. Like I was, I was like, it's so stupid to win $9. Um, I actually on purpose bought candy at the airport. So I would go home even um, with nine bucks, but to grind that, that's a lot of work to walk out of there without hitting a home run. You hit a home run in Vegas. Sometimes you walk away with a big winner, but to grind for like five days or whatever it was, that's amazing. Like I'm, I'm proud of that, right? That's my life. And that's, I think that's the, 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 that is the absolute theory and mentality of my shows. I'm glad you say that. I really appreciate that comment. You have no idea. Um, no, these are, these are books I actually bought, man. These are books that I actually, I paid money for those books. I got a bunch more of them out there. Um, okay. I, nice. I'm going to try the lemon thing. I'm going to give it a, give it a shot. Um, cause it's funny. And again, it's going back to the lemon thing. Um, the thing about pizza is this, and here, why, why are we talking about pizza? Um, pizza is this, it, it, there's something about the pizza on the East Coast. And I'm from, I'm in Seattle now. And I, my wife will, I, she, she, I close my door, she can't hear me say this. The pizza out here sucks, sucks. Like there's no good pizza out here. It's, it's awful. Like Papa Murphy's, right? That kind of stuff. And there's a place called Brooklyn Brothers that just opened up and they make a great pie. They make a great pie. And the reason why Brooklyn Brothers is actually edible pizza in Seattle is two things. And you're not going to believe this when I tell you. It's expensive. 
a large a large pizza, like an 18 inch pizza, is 40 bucks. Okay, why is it 40 bucks? Because they fly in the polio cheese, right, from the East Coast. They also ship in water bottled on the East Coast. They get water from Camden, New Jersey. I talked to the guy. Water comes from Camden. Okay, they make their dough with water from the East Coast bottled over there. There's something in that water. I'm sure it's a bunch of chemicals and crap and pee and everything else, but whatever it is, that dough is different because of that water. The cheese is different because, or the pizza is different because of that cheese. That polio cheese has got a little bit of a snap to it. I wonder if what you're saying with this lemon juice thing is part of that. Because that polio cheese, that snap to it is beautiful. And that's why I go to that place. And that's why the East Coast pizza is different. That cheese, the dough, there's something about that that makes it different. And that you can't replicate it. And these guys ship that stuff in to make the pizza and the dough fresh out here from those ingredients. That, that's, it, it's goofy, but as a chef, I can tell you, there's the properties of how you make the bread is, is a big thing. And that cheese makes a huge difference. So when you see like expensive butter or ex different brands of cheese, there's a difference there. And polio is, is the secret to it. Anyway, that's not at all why we're here talking. Let's go to my craps table. I'm gonna go play a little bit. I'm gonna show you something um, that I've, I've shown you before. Um, and I actually, I, I'm, I'm, the reason why I'm gonna show you this is because I wrote a letter to, um, to two people, Michael Shackelford and to JB. Both good friends of mine, both who are very well versed in the math of things. Let me show you something cool. I've shown you this exact move before. This is gonna be the 25 hour six move, right? I'll do it on the eight. I'm gonna put a $12 eight out here. Now watch this. And I know that your, some of your local casinos will not take this bet. And I, and I think this might be why. Um, my local used to bitch at me all the time, saying we're not gonna, we're not gonna take the bet. It's not, your, it's not a proper bet. There's the eight. Um, it's not a proper bet. Make your bet right. Here's what they're saying to you. Watch, watch, watch this. This is an interesting ROI discussion. The $12 eight pays 14 bucks, okay? 10, 14. Now check this out. If you say press it, they're gonna give you the cap, the two bucks. They're gonna make your eight look like $24, okay? You have $2 in your rack. 24 pays $28. You've got two. So here goes $28. You've got two. You can, I, what I do, drop the two and say, give me 30 for two. 30 for two, right? That's what this does. Now look what you have in your rack. If you pull it, if you pull it all down, right? A press and a pull. That's 25, that's 50, and that's four. $54, okay? That's a standard $12.8 full press. Pull it down when you're done. Check this out, $12.8. Move this up over here a little bit, just to get out of the way. $12.8, we're gonna get paid 14 bucks. I'm gonna say, take it to a quarter, and they're gonna say 24, I'm gonna say no, take it to a quarter. I'm gonna get back $1. Now I've got the 12 I started with, plus the three, it's $25. It goes to a $25 bet, bam. Okay, now, what does $25 pay? Everybody, 25 pays 29, 29, or 30 for one, 30 for one. Guess what? That move, $55, that's an extra buck, right? Same investment, I put 12, both guys put 12 bucks out there. One guy's got 54, one guy's got 55, okay? That $25 six or eight press right there, it's worth an extra buck, even though it's not a proper bet, and you technically get screwed for about 23 cents or whatever whatever it is on that bet, at the end of it, your ROI is 8% higher. That's an extra 8% on your money. 44 or 54 versus 55 bucks in total. That's an interesting thing to me. So I've asked, um, I, I, and I know we, we know this, right? There's no changing the house edge. Nothing, nothing you do changes the house edge. Nothing you can do mitigates the house edge. However, Changing the ROI on a bet has an effect on what the house edge does to your bankroll. So your expected loss, if you do that move every time versus doing the $12 to $24 move every single time, your EV changes. So I've asked them to help me calculate what the EV changes on that. I'm gonna report back to you. But that's one of those badass moves that we forget about. 
So if your casino will take the bet, if you're gonna be a full press person, even better is this, watch this. 12 goes to 25 with a dollar change, right? If you wanna be press, press, collect, the nice thing about this is that that 25 pays 29, um, $29. Guess what, The very if you use full press, it goes right to 54, that's a proper bet. So the next press is an instant proper bet with no, nothing else out of your rack. It just comes, it just comes perfectly to 54 bucks to pay 63. I like this 25 hour eight and six for a lot of reasons. A, the extra buck. B, I love the natural full press to 54 bucks, right? And oftentimes what I'll do is this, I'll, my, my move, and actually I did this over the weekend. By the way, I had a, a great day. I rolled seven five one sixes in a row um, on Saturday. Um, but from here, right, if you did this, okay, 30 for one, great. I got 30 bucks in the rack. I got my 12 bucks plus a few dollars extra. Now I'm here. The next one is gonna be the $29 goes to 54. And then we take $63 back, right, off that. And I'm out. And really, in three, in three hits right there, there's your 12 bucks and you got you know, $150 back in the rack, or 140 bucks back in the rack. That's a nice little move, right? A nice little three hit spiff on that six and eight is pretty cool. 12 to 25 right? 25 to 54, $63 back in the rack and you're up a hundred bucks. That's a great little boom, boom, boom. Get out of there quick kind of a move. But again, it starts with going from 12 to 25, not 12 to 24. And I wanted to, I wanted to put that out there for you today. Think about that. If you have a table of your own or in craps, you practice that. Um, that dollar may not seem like a lot, but it's 8%. That's a lot of difference. Right to go from twelve dollars to fifty four, it's still a three hundred and some percent profit. Right to go from three hundred percent to three hundred eight percent or whatever the, the difference is, that's quite a difference over the course of time. So that ROI difference, I think, is a big deal. I'm gonna I'm gonna get some help with the math to calculate what the EV is on that and see if it does change things. And I don't know. Again, the house edge doesn't change, but the expected loss changes. I think. Um, the way that we calculate that. So, so look for look for um, a note from me on that when I hear back from Michael and JB to see what that feels like. I think it's going to be an interesting look at that move. And that can happen everywhere, right? If you're a heavy hitter, right, the 25, the 250 is the same thing, right? Instead of going to 240 on your six or eight, if you start them out at 250, it does the exact same thing. It pays 290. It pays 300 for 10. Okay, 300 bucks for 10 is a pretty nice deal. Matter of fact, in my morning show where I'm doing the 1080 across, right, going out of 250 is not the worst thing. I think this move is better when you build to it, not when you start at it. But yeah, that it's the same deal, right? There's, you know, anyway, that's my, uh, that's my little thought-provoking craps question for you today is that one there. And again, we'll talk more about win goals and loss limits as it relates to the, uh, as it relates to the drawdown tomorrow. Um, after I do another, another show on that, but anyway, think about this too, by the way, um, come visit me in Seattle. Our local casinos now all have $5 tables, which is fantastic. My, my, my local has been $10 forever. They now have $5 tables all day, every day, even on Saturdays, Saturday at five o'clock when I went up there to make my bets. And I said, I just want to throw the dice a little bit, buy an hour table. They go to they go to ten dollars at like eight o'clock or something like that. But you know, it's not that you can't you you can't make it's hard to make money at five dollars, but it's fun to go up there and practice for five bucks. You know what I mean? And running a little bit of outside, a little bit of outside, marching soldier, which is what I was doing for a little bit. That's fun. Who cares for twenty bucks, right? It's like I did this outside marching soldier thing, um, just waiting for the dice. You know, and for twenty dollars, I just who cares, right? Um, Anyway, I got to work five hour strategies now. If I can play at a five hour table and get some practice in every day, that's actually kind of cool. So things to think about. Um, okay, Arcadia's when we go over it again. I'll do it again. Here we go. Let's, let's watch it one more time. You ready? I'll do it really slow because it's, it's important to see how this works. Let me put your comment up there. And here we go. I'll spread the, I'll spread the chips out for you. So a $12 eight or a six, it pays, it's $12. It pays 14. There's your $14 win. Now, most people will say press it. When you press it, they give you your cap, and that becomes a $24 bet. 
24 bucks. This is the regular move, okay, $24. That pays $28, 25, $28. Now, what I would typically do is I'd drop two bucks and say, give me 30 for two, okay? That way you just, you don't gotta deal with a bunch of whites, okay? 30 for two. If you bring all that money back to your rack, 25, 50, four. That's what that, if you brought it down, so 14 or 12 to 24, 28 and bring it all down, you had $54 in your rack. That's, that's the normal, everybody does this move, okay? What I do here is this, $12, same thing, $12 pays 14, 10, 14 bucks. I'll take back $1 and say make it a quarter. Now it's gonna be 25 bucks. It goes to a quarter. So instead of taking two bucks back, take one buck back and ask them to make it a quarter. They're gonna yell at you and say it's not a proper bet. You're gonna say, I don't care, I know it pays $29. Cool, $29 or $28 or $29, it pays 29. You can drop the one and say make it look like 30. You're bringing back 55 versus 54. So you get an extra dollar, right? That nets you an extra buck. All said and done. Because there's those nickels become a quarter. So that guy's got 54, you got 55. Same starting point. You both started with 12 bucks, but you end up with an extra dollar, right? That's 8% different in the net profit. That's fantastic. That's a weird little, like the way the math works on that is weird. And th that's gonna affect your expected loss for sure, if that, if, it, if it's played that way. So I gotta, again, I don't know how to calculate that. I'm gonna find out how, to, how do you calculate the EV on that, but that's how that move works. Pretty cool, right? Um, anyway, let's go back over here um, to the other screen. Ba -ba 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 -bum. Okay, there we go. Um, Buckeye, you're, you cracked me up, man. Those roulette strategies were, were complicated. Um, I have to practice putting the bets out there <laughs> to make those things work. I was gonna do it, but then Friday got out of hand with, with all the other stuff that was going on. I'm like, I'm simplifying my life. But yeah, those are cool. They're just a lot, right? I gotta go and really get through it um, and, and practice how many moves there are to get it working. But um, yeah, uh, don't be stealing my content, bro. What's, what, what did I steal from you? What did I, what did I do? Um, let's see, uh, we are kindred spirits. Yes, for 100% sure. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know skill. The $26 one is weird because the payment is 30 bucks. So if you go from 14 to 26, you get paid 30. That would be, I think it ends up being the same, doesn't it? Um, it might be an extra, I have to go, go do it. It might be an extra buck. It's just interesting. I mean, the, the, the $25 one is, is the one that I've been doing. I have, I'll, I'll try it with 30. Anyway, let me ask Michael and JB what the what the uh, the math is. I know it, there's, there, there's an EV impact to that. I just don't know how much and how to calculate it. So, all right, there we go, guys. I'm out. It's nine o'clock. Time for work. Time for a uh, finish off the Monday kind of thing. Um, let's get out of here. Y'all are awesome. Thanks for being here. I hope you enjoyed the Super Bowl. Uh, Chris, DJ, quickly in chat, are you going to do a recap with Ian? Super Bowl recap show kind of thing? Um, oh, you're some improper bets. Um, is that your plan? Are you gonna do something? Just let us know in chat if you're gonna do it. Um, I think, by the way, the next Dice Control show from Jeff and those guys is next week. And I don't know if Jeff's planning on doing a craps chat soon. I hope he is, but he talked about it. Maybe now that the Super Bowl is out of the, out of the, out of the thing, we may get back to it. I don't know. When I hear, you'll know. Anyway, um, I'm out. You guys have a great rest of your Monday. I'll see you tomorrow morning for another uh, trial run of the Daily Paycheck with the drawdown. And then we'll get, get after it with our Gambling 201 series. So in, in the middle, uh, or uh, in, in the meantime, love y'all, God bless. Take care, bye.